Excellent. Well done. Great. Fantastic job, everyone. It's an amazing piece of work that you guys have done. Really beautiful. Thank you. Just when I was able to say to them, well done, great show, actually, that's what I've actually got the odd tear in the eye. Welling. It's a bit like Australian Idol, isn't it, really? No, it's nothing like that. <laughs> the tears, I mean. <laughs> the tears that emerge, you know. Oh, he's got music. Oh, he's got music. In Nigeria, we do like, you know, like jumps and booty shaking. <laughs> Michael Jackson, my biggest in inspiration. Break dancing, also known as b-boying. Hip hop, crump and hip hop. Jerking, doggy, cr crumping. Crumping is what I love to do too. I do jerking, um, doggy, cat daddy, and all of that. Up until today, you've been working with Sean to see what is possible here. From today, the choices are made about what will be formed. It is also the day I choose who completes the project. You wouldn't be in this room unless you had something special to offer. Now we've got to put that together. OK, we're going to start with dance conversation. So using dance and movement, we're going to have some sort of conversation. Remember, an idea can start from something really small. This project has grown out of workshops. I never really five years ago would have ever expected that I would be doing a project with teenagers. I just really didn't think I'd, I'd be heading that way. And I started three years ago, just a couple of days a week, I'd drive out to their schools. I got to know them all at the different schools and then I selected the ones that really um, had a strong sense of theatre and dance. Doing those moves that he teaches us, uh, we kind of get embarrassed, but he makes sure that we feel comfortable when we're making these moves because it's dancing. Like, dancing is to express our feelings, to express our movements through our mind, body and soul. A lot of these kids are untrained, you know, like actually most of them, 80% of them are untrained in the sense they don't necessarily have rich parents who send them to the best ballet school. These kids learn on the streets and, you know, their sense of invention is, is quite incredible. The sense of play is incredible. They're constantly watching YouTube, pulling up the latest clip, working on the, you know, crumping, jerking, tutting, which is all the finger stuff that they do. They teach it to themselves. They learn in the schoolyard. It's amazing to see the rawness of all these techniques in these teenagers. him because he's kind of funny and he's kind to people. Sometimes he lets you add in your own ideas. He directs you, basically, step by step. He tells you what looks good, what doesn't. So what we're going to do now is we're going to work through a series of scenes. We're not going to get stuck on detail too much, but I want to give us a chance to have a go at everything, yeah? They think and move very quickly with ideas, like let's try this one, let's try that one, because they access that many ideas when they click on YouTube or when they chat to their friends. It's very um, high information. I've absolutely utilised that, but what I've also tried to do is, over a 60 minute work, is to crystallise that and channel it. So it isn't just a, a series of fast ideas. A wok, a wadia, a dut. Um, Miriam. Christine's going to begin and she's going to begin her jumping. And it's like you want to join in. You're just enjoying this feeling of jumping again, yeah? We have a group of uh, seven girls from Sudan and uh, three of the guys as well. Filipino, Spanish Filipino, some students from South Africa as well. There's a Macedonian element. I 
didn't know who Sean Parker was until last year. Now I know him as like a mad professional choreographer and inspiring guy. I did the Bachelor of Arts in Dance at Victorian College of the Arts. And then from there, Meryl Tankard, who was just about to take over the Australian Dance Theatre, she came and auditioned us at VCA and she said, I want you to come and join the company. And Meryl Tankard, she'd worked many years with Pina Bausch in Germany, the famous Pina Bausch, who basically changed the face of contemporary dance theatre. And so it was an amazing experience. We toured the world, did really good works. Placed within a 60-minute show, not every scene can be highly acrobatic, highly physical. We're going to be performing like at Seymour Centre in front of a lot of people. I feel very happy and kind of nervous a bit. Performing is basically my life, so performing up there would just be like, wow! There's going to be 500 people there, every performance, watching us. But there's this idea of the fourth wall. And the fourth wall is that invisible wall between the performer and the audience, okay? It's really exciting for the kids to go into the city, into the Seymour Centre. You know, the city's another place for them. One of my students from St Agnes has never actually been into the city before. I acknowledge that they're teenagers and students, but we also worked really professionally. So they get a sense of what it's really like to create dance and to create a work. Basically, we want to teach them the skills of being a professional. I'll say, stay on that side, stay on that side. You put it down, you hold this one, he holds that one, you go into the plate. Sir, how long do we do this paper thing for? <laughs> this piece is about having difficulties, having different, um, you know, misunderstandings and at the end coming together and working it out. It's kind of like about you know how we're all in school and we all come from different places and you know, different tribes and cultures. The yard takes place in the Australian school yard itself in Western Sydney and for me it was like the bell rings these kids go out at lunch and it's sort of game on anything can happen. They're thrown out, you know, in you know, in the mix. The idea of loneliness, um, competition, survival, bullying, interaction, political things that are going on within the schoolyard. When I grew up in Mildura, it's a country town on the Murray River. I, I didn't really know you could have dance as a career. When I was 13, my sister danced. I went to see a dance concert, a contemporary dance ballet of Watership Down. So basically, there was all these different coloured rabbits dancing around the stage. After the show, I started doing some spins and pulling off turns, and the ballet teacher saw me and just grabbed me because I'd never trained as a dancer, but after watching the show, I could just do all the tricks, and she was like, ah, she grabbed me. So that's how I got into dance. A number of the break dancers clearly have huge potential to go anywhere in that world. I've been training them in yoga, acrobatics, as well as contemporary dance to extend their range. It's about broadening their skills so they can have a career in dance. Before I met Sean, I was just, I didn't know how to express my talent. I didn't know how to make it, you know, shine more. But working with Sean, it just, he shows you what the difference between having a talent and keeping it. I'm just thankful to have him encouraging me and training me to actually push myself and be more disciplined. For those other kids that love to dance and all that, if you ever see him like coming through, like even just say a hi, show him your talent or anything, because he loves seeing people dance and the enjoyment of what people do. Because um, he's a person that would in, like just put a smile in you and just make you make you want to move to anything. What's been great about the project is a lot of them feel really important. I'm constantly discussing the ideas with them so that they understand that they actually do have a voice 
and once they open up, they just go for it. They're, it's all in there waiting to come out. You know, for the first day of rehearsal, the 40 kids came in. Straight away, the Sudanese girls went to one corner. The Pacific Islander girls went to another corner. The Filipino boys came to this corner. Through this work, it's been amazing to see them become friends. You know, to see them after a couple of days rehearsals chatting to each other and chatting to different groups that they wouldn't actually chat to before. Because when you're in the space, when you're on the stage, they have to work together.